uh, we are continuing with uh, our seminar on uh, courtship and marriage. And uh, I want to look at uh, now another issue, uh, which uh, I believe that uh, the Lord will bless us and uh, will help us understand better. We are living in a world that is troubled and uh, we need wisdom from above to be able to deal with some of the issues that arise in the family. So I'm going to deal with dealing with the issues in the family and understanding our roles. These very principles will also help us in our relationship and in our courtship. And so I like us to pray and then be able to start uh, this uh, session. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, I'm just asking that uh, you be with us and uh, you may hold the skies that uh, the weather may be perfect so that the children may be benefited. Give us temperance in everything. And Lord, if there was a time that we needed to understand issues that do with our hearts and our families now, because you are restoring everything that the enemy has taken away, we pray that we may not be extremes and fanatics in these issues, but Lord, we may have wisdom from above to deal with the issues that confront us in our relationship, courtship, and marriage. And so we ask of thy blessing as the author of the family. Give us the words that are just meet in due season for such a time as this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we want to look at uh, how to deal with the issues in our families. And we are talking about our preparation has to start with uh, has to start with uh, how we deal with our relationship, how we deal with our courtship. If these things, we cannot deal with them when uh, we are in uh, relationships, then uh, it will be so hard to uh, deal with them in uh, marriages. It will be so hard to deal with them in uh, uh, marriages. And so it is good that uh, we have knowledge of how to deal with these things so that when they crop up, we may be able to deal with them. Uh, and uh, I know God will give us wisdom and tact in how to do this. Uh, the same thing that I'm realizing uh, as I continue uh, reading the word of God and I, I continue being in uh, my marriage because it is helping me understand things that uh, I didn't understand as I'm going through my own marriage, there are things that uh, I'm coming to understand that uh, I never actually understood. And so I pray that uh, these uh, practical things that I'm sharing with you, you may take them to heart and uh, let God guide you in how to deal with uh, uh, this, uh, these issues. Uh, Are you married to a husband who is unconverted? These are the matters that uh, we ought to consider. The husband that uh, and the wife that uh, actually, uh, you entered into this courtship or you entered into this marriage without knowing the whole truth or both of you are knowing the truth, but it has reached a time that uh, things are not working out as they should be working, things are not working out as they should be working. How do we deal with these issues to do with marriage? Because uh, as a ministry, and I want to give a disclaimer, as a ministry, don't advise people to divorce and separate. That is what we agreed as a ministry. We will not be a ministry who are there to advise people to separate and divorce. That is not our work. If you want to divorce and separate, do it on your own but never say that the gospel sounders have advised you to divorce or separate. That is not the work that God has to, called us to do. God has called us to restore a family unit. And so if you are facing problems in your marriage, 
and even in courtship, because I said that courtship is an advanced stage of uh, your, uh, uh, your work in life towards marriage. And so these are not things to be just ended in, you end in, you, you come in and you break up, you come in and break up. How do you deal with such a thing? Say Ephesians 432. Do what? And be, I want us to be alive. And be what? Kind one, kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath done what? If really you can't learn how to forgive these things in courtship, don't think that you can practice it in marriage. It is not just because your courtship is not working, you have to walk out. You have heard those statements and read those statements where Sister White says that if the engagement is not working out, do what? Break it up instead of doing what? Entering in marriage and then regret. But how far are you going to deal with the courtship that you are in if things are not working out. Is God calling you every time you are in a relationship and anything happens, you walk out of this relationship. Maybe you can walk out of the relationship, but we are talking about where it has reached courtship. You have seen, uh, you have gone to both parents. And you see there is a public image to be protected. You don't just introduce yourself to the parents and then all of a sudden it's not working and you go back to the parents and say, no, we can't go ahead. Have you tried to solve this thing amicably as people who will also face challenges in marriage and you have to uh, actually solve them? And so uh, 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 absolving everything uh, uh, or the dissolving everything I mean, it's not the way forward because you will be in tempting situations in your marriage. And the way you deal with your courtship is the way you just deal with your marriage. And so when man sinned at the Garden of, uh, uh, the garden of Eden, God looked for him. And uh, this is what I'm saying. If you will have to uh, dissolve your relationship, do it or courtship, do it in a way that will be in a redemp redemptive man. Don't leave wounds. And we are being told in, uh, is it in, uh, Prophets and King, if I can remember page 84, try to make wrongs right. Although you will read another statement in steps to Christ, we cannot atone for our past. But why am I talking about trying to reconcile everything uh, and trying to run uh, the marriage in a way that will be honorable? It is because of this statement uh, I find in, uh, uh, in Adventist homepage 15. Look at this statement. Let us read together. Home is the what? The heart of all activity. Society is composed of what? Families and is what the heads of families do what? Make it. Out of the heart are the issues of what? Of life and the heart of the community, of the church and of the nation is the what? The household. Before we can have a church, before we can have a nation, what do we have? a family, a home. It is where the, the laws of the nation are shaped. The character of the nation is shaped. The character of the community is shaped. The well-being of society, the success of the world, the church, the prosperity of the nation depend upon what? Home influences. How do we deal with the issues that we are having? If we can be able to deal better with the issues we are having in our courtship and in our marriages, then the society will be a better place to live. The nation will be a nation that fears the Lord. But when we deal with things, courtship and marriages haphazardly, then even the laws that make up the nation will not be laws that can be actually desired of. Matthew chapter five verses, uh, Matthew chapter 18 verses 21. 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Amen. And how many times? Still what? Seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Now, I told you there is always a story behind a story. Are you seeing what Christ is saying there? Until how many times? Who is seeing something there? Who is Jesus Christ talking to? 
He's talking to Peter, is it? Who was Peter? From which descendant? Huh? He was a Jew, is it? Yeah. Now you have to understand what is happening in this verse. How many years did Christ give probation to Israel? According to the prophets of Daniel chapter nine. 70 times what? 70 times seven. This is what actually Christ is reminding Peter. You see how I have dealt with you people for 490 years, but you, you can't even deal with your neighbor for a few years. There's always a story behind a story. How much should I forgive this person? How much should I forbear with this person? Is it just trifling, trifling with hearts and when something happens, you cast them aside? You see how married people should be behaving? Christ was married to these people and he's telling them, see how I have dealt with you. How should you be dealing with one another? 70 times time, seven. I have given you this 490 years to repent as a nation. But how are you dealing with your own brethren? How are you dealing with your wife? How are you dealing with the person you are in courtship with? Matthew chapter five, verse seven. Blessed are the what? The merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And we have to see this beyond what is being talked about, about being merciful and peacemakers. Jesus Christ, has heard John and James. And what are John's and James, uh, John and James doing? John and James finds another man preaching and they go to Jesus Christ and they tell him, we saw another man preaching and he is not part of this group. Master, what shall we do? And then Jesus tells him that even though they are not here with us, those who are not against us, they are uh, for us. And not only that, he then passes into a village and the people doesn't receive Jesus Christ in a manner that he should be received. And those two boys, actually the, this, those two men tells Jesus Christ, should we call thunder from heaven as Elijah did? And Christ tells them, you don't know what kind of spirit you are of. And you people, you don't know what kind of spirit you have in your courtship and marriage. That is why we do what you do. You are ready to call thunder to come down to your marriage and to your courtship by dissolving it. These are the stories you read in the Bible and you have just one perspective of the story and you don't understand the true nature of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We should read the gospel and understand how actually it affects our family. These things that we see that the disciples were doing are the same things we are repeating in our courtship and in our marriage. We are dealing, how do you deal with the differences in the family? Are you sons of thunder, James and John? And so you don't have to rush into decisions without prayerfully and in a redemptive manner considering the issue and trying your best in case of dealing with unbelieving spouse and a, a, a spouse overtaken with adultery or with any other case that you may think it is not acceptable unto you. And uh, we don't have to give an excuse of David and Bathsheba here, neither would I want to forget how Abigail was much persevering to the husband. I challenge women who are seated here. Who among you is like Abigail? Let them raise their hands. First Peter chapter three. I like uh, I likewise you wives be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be won, may be won without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. How many are in relationship and courtship and they have this fear that can win their spouses to come back to the truth? You will never bring somebody into truth and in subjection and in submission while your every other habit is to lash at them and to demean them, and to see that you are the one who is on the right side and they are on the wrong. And we read in uh, Faith and Works, page 103, paragraph three, the sinner may do what? 
may err, but he's not cast off without what? Mas his only hope, however, is repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the Father's prerogative to forgive our transgressions and sins. Every true teacher will feel that he, should he err at all, it is better to err on the side of mercy than on the side of what? Severity. Now we are being told this is the prerogative of God himself. So my challenge to those who are in courtship and marriage, what is your prerogative? Because we are talking about having that man and having that woman that can be able to conduct a courtship and marriage the way Christ himself conducts himself with the church. So the prerogative of God the Father that he has given unto his son is to deal with the erring in a way that will bring them to salvation. Until the case is beyond redemption, then uh, there is no way, nothing we can do, but upon entering this situation of dissolving your courtship and marriage, think twice. If the wife is an unbeliever and an opposer, uh, this is a, a testimony to sexual behaviors, page 39. No thought of divorce. If the wife is an unbeliever and an opposer, the husband cannot, in view of the law of God, put her away on this ground alone. In order to be in harmony with the law of Jehovah, he must abide with her unless he chooses of herself to depart. We are talking about you are in marriage and you have to deal with these things. And by the way, we are laying foundations that the way you conduct your courtship is the same way you will react in your marriage. Don't think that in, uh, by the way, in marriage, allow me to use this word. I know people will start differing with it, but you can differ. In love, uh, in, uh, in marriage, either love grows or dies. Is it true? So what if it was dying in courtship and you end in marriage? When you end in marriage, you have just dug a grave and put yourself in. And so if you are thinking you can withhold affection and then in marriage, that is when you can give it. No, when you are entering into marriage, you have just buried yourself. Reason is this, because now in marriage, you are used to each other a lot. You are seeing each other every day and the person that you are living with is growing older. Thank the Lord that I'm not growing old. Do you see uh, that I'm old? Then you need to wash your eyes. I'm growing young. There is no one who goes to continuous growing, going to Christ and grows older. Now you didn't catch that. Because what you are looking in person being old is something else from what I'm looking at. I'm saying this, that if you will enter into marriage, you have, you are getting used to either, you are getting to know each other and things are happening in marriage. This person, you are seeing them daily. And if you do not love how, uh, do, do not uh, 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 learn how to grow love in marriage, then it will be so difficult to manage this marriage. And we read about what is love. Many marriages are being destroyed because men and women do not understand their responsibilities. A Christian's wife obligations. I have some things to say to you from the Lord. The Lord has a work for you to do. It is not a public what? Work, but a very important one. A work in your own. Hey, women, you don't want to read this. You are contemplating upon these issues. Or you are listening. Thank you, Sister Tad. I, I won't bother you again. The Lord has a work for you to do as a wife. What is this work? A very important one, a work in your. If there is anything that a woman should fight to see, it is prospering is what? Her home. She should give it everything she can give on the face of the earth to make sure that things happen there. To be true to your position as a wife and a mother, no other can do this, your work. 
No one will come to be a wife to your husband. No one will come to be a partner to the man you are putting. You have to understand your responsibility as a person. So, her home, with the scripture before you, I ask, for what are you spending your time in battle? There, there's a point that this, this woman who actually, it was like she was learning medical missionary at Battle Creek, and she forgot that she was a married person. Let us hear this story. Her home. With the scripture before you, I ask, for what are you spending your time in Battle Creek? Was she doing something bad, learning about medical mission or what? No. Has God called you to neglect your home? No, no. My sister, the Lord has shown me that you are mistaking your duty. Your husband needs you. Your children need their mother. You have stepped out of the path where Jesus leads the way. He is saying to you, follow me, and he will lead you in your own home duties, which are now sadly neglected. The voice of the Lord has not bidden you to separate your interest from that of your husband and children. Your first duty is in the home. The spirit of the Lord has not given you a work or qualified you to do a work that is contrary to his own word. Talk about uh, women going for mission all the months and they have left the husband at home. Now, don't raise your hand to ask me if they, they should not go on a mission. Go to a mission if your marriage is working. If you are not a missionary at home, don't attempt as a woman to go for mission or outside. Make sure you're a mission at home. And you are coming to those places where you have to have employment in the office. I tell you, these things are so serious that if anyone looked at them as God looks at them, we wouldn't be having conflict in the family. What does it mean to spend your time in Battle Creek? Women are busy with their trade, obsessed with their education, and some perceived religious duty that they don't know they are married. This gives way to many husbands to be overtaken in temptation and seek social fulfillment elsewhere. At the same time, these women come to get used to A or B till they start comparing him with their husband. This has wrecked many families. You know, we have the rules of adaptation for those who had a chance to go to school, is it? What are the rules of adaptation? Tabitha, you are saying that I will not magnify what you say. What are the rules of adaptation? Oh, you remember that one? Survival for the fittest. Number one rule of adaptation, the person whom you spend the time most with is the person you will get used to and the person you will share everything with. Check it out, Google it. So if you are a wife and you are spending most of your time with brother E, whom will you love more, your husband or brother E? Those are the rules of adaptation. Proverbs chapter 14, verse one. Every wise woman buildeth her what? Oh. Her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Why do married men don't like spending their times with their wives? Can I have some answers? You spend a lot of time together in courtship, is it? Now he is your property or she is your property. Whether you go outside for two months, you will come back and get him or her, is it? And you think that marriage can get better. And no, let me not go there. You will say that this is not conversion. 
Counsel to a mother, you have a great work, a sacred holy calling to exemplify the Christian graces as faithful wife and mother. To be lovable, patient, kind, yet firm in your home life. To learn right methods and acquire tact for training your own little ones that they may keep the way of the Lord. What a great grand work that a wife has at home. Instead of dwelling on the negatives that is going on or uh, uh, passing through in her life, she should be concentrating and you will have challenges. But we are told the more you concentrate on the negative side of your marriage, the more actually you become miserable. The more you concentrate on the negative side of your courtship, the more you will be feeling to come out of it. And this should not be the case. Now, for women who are married, we, we are looking at dealing with family issues and what is bringing problems that can really bring back happiness. If you have the idea that some work greater and holier than this is, has been entrusted to you, you are under a deception. In neglecting your husband and children for what you're supposed to be what? Religious? Either to attend meetings or to work for others, to give Bible readings or to have messages for others, you are going directly contrary to the words of inspiration in the instruction of Paul to Titus. The religion of Christ never leads a wife and a mother to do as you have done. And some, after doing this, they employ maids. There is a quote I have been looking for where actually a maid should not be taking uh, uh, bathing water to her husband in the bathroom. I pray the Lord that I'll get that quote. But you find such a things are happening in the family. That should never happen in the family. This kind of familiar, uh, familiarity of a husband and a maid brings a lot of problem. And the people are disposed to doing these things as if they were normal things. No, they are not normal. You may cultivate now, you may now cultivate the home making qualities with good effect for your children are of the age when they most need a mother. The restless spirit naturally inclines to mischief. The active mind, if left unoccupied with better things will give heed to what which Saturn may suggest. The children need the watchful eye of the mother. They need to be instructed to be guided in safe paths, to be kept from vice, to be won by kindness and be confirmed in well-doing by diligent training. And as you carry out your marriage as a mother or as a father, the children are watching what kind of father are you and what kind of a mother are you? And you see your marriage is not working and you have children. And instead of trying to better this marriage, you are becoming negative about it and you are implanting the same in your children. And what will you tell them when their marriages are not working? They just carried what they saw in the family to their marriages. And so don't think that the decisions that you are making as a married person will not affect your, the, the, the other people who will get into marriage. They will affect the other people. And so the Lord has not called you to neglect your home and your husband and children. He never works in this way. He never will. You have before your own door a little plot of ground to care for, and God will hold you responsible for his, this work which he has left in your hands. If there is anything that a woman should be careful about is caring about the husband in whichever way. That way you melt his heart. And uh, suppose I'm seeing Brother Zadok is being caught up with this thing of chips. Suppose that uh, you wronged your wife, Doreen, and he came with your best meal there. Will you throw it away, my brother? First of all, he has broken you down. He has brought the meal you love. What will you be quarreling after, after that? But what if she started resisting you after you had a quarrel? That home never set, will never be settled. So there's these ideas that when you have quarreled, you don't give your best in marriages and in courtship. And you think that it can get better than that. Learn to do your best when the things are not working. Overcome evil by doing good. That is Romans chapter 12. Something that we read daily, overcome evil by doing good. But what do we do? We overcome evil by evil. 
And that is why we are stuck until today, where we are stuck, in our marriages, in our courtship. We are trying to overcome evil with evil. Such a thing will never happen. Overcome evil by doing good. Some men and women have considered poverty to be sin. And uh, when they have reached at a time, actually they are struggling in their marriages, it takes away all the happiness they had. These are some of the things that happen. How do you manage your marriage when you are not well off, when things happen and you are deprived financially? Now, if you loved to be given in courtship and have set up a standard which you cannot maintain, when you reach in marriage and things are not working out, you won't survive in marriage. Godliness with contentment is of great gain for when we came into this world, we brought nothing and we are taking nothing. If your heart is not contented with shelter, food and clothing, don't think that you can be contented with something else. Failed dreams. Some of the marriages are not working because when people entered into marriage, they had a lot of expectations. Is it not? Uh, I try sometimes to be a perfectionist for those who know me. And uh, some of the first weeks in my marriage, I was disappointed because I'm a perfectionist. You hear me? Don't go and spread this abroad. <laughs> Okay, now the problem is this, I married a perfectionist. You now see the problem. You see the problem we are having in our family, the first weeks in our marriage. I'm a perfectionist and I have married what? So who is perfect in that marriage? Everyone is perfect. Can that marriage work? After two weeks, we knew that this is going to fail. And we choose, we chose a position now, which is reconcilable. I'm more vile than you are. And so let us work on our vileness, not our perfections. People enter into, and it's not bad to have expectations in marriage, is it? Is it bad to enter in with expectations into marriage? No, it is not bad to enter with the expectation. What if they fail? How do you deal with them? That is now the question. Should you be crying and snarling about these things forever? You cannot, you will never make your marriage be okay. Some women enter into marriage and they are actually there as uh, luggages. Allow me to use the word. Here are things we should be considered. Will the one you marry bring happiness to your home? Is she an economist? We have talked about that, or will she, if married, not only use all her own earnings, but all your, yours to gratify a vanity, a love of appearance? Are her principles correct in this direction? Has she anything now to depend upon? I know that to the mind of a man infatuated with love and thoughts of marriage, this question will be brushed away as though they were of no consequences. Many a wife think that it is the duty of man to supply everything, but this is not so. Once they are not supplied with what they want, they turn into something else. But go back and watch where is the man and where is the woman? And how that woman of Proverbs 31 became that woman. She had a man in life who actually trusted that she can be her first bank. And then she was able to buy a, a, a uh, to buy a field, she was able to buy a sewing machine, she was able to have a garden, a kitchen garden on all this stuff. And so we need people who can manage their finances because many of the problems in, uh, in, in marriages and in courtship is about managing finances. And so we need carefully to search our hearts and our motives why we do whatever we do. Another thing is this, Women who are always yearning to have the constant attention of their husbands. 
Yes, a woman should have the attention of the husband because once you take her, you have taken all the other attentions from her. You are the only person. She should have your attention. But now when the woman comes to a point that she has become so a child that uh, now she has to disturb the husband, family life doesn't work. The heart yearns for what? Human love, but this love is not strong enough or pure enough or precious enough to supply the place of the love of Jesus. A woman who is always seeking the sympathy of the partner and she is not pursuing God in her life will always be a trouble to her courtship and marriage. Give your partner a time to breathe, not doing bad things, but give him even time to rethink about some things. You shouldn't be always wanting to get his attention. He can't do anything. You are on his face or on her face. It is only in Christ that a marriage alliance can be formed, safely formed. Human love should draw its closest bonds from divine love. We looked at this. And then some of the things that actually destroy our marriage is the spirit of selfishness, where you want to be, to have everything. Instituted by God, marriage is a sacred ordinance and should never be ended upon in a spirit of selfishness. If you end uh, your marriage with a spirit of selfishness, you destroy everything that God has made it to be. <coughs> Jesus came to our world to rectify man's mistake and to restore the moral image of God in man. Wrong sentiments in regard to marriage had found a place in the minds of the teachers of Israel. They were making of none effect the sacred institution of marriage. Man was becoming so hard hearted that he would for the most trivial excuse separate from his wife. Or if he chose, he will separate her from the children and send her away. This considered a great, uh, this was considered a great disgrace and was often accompanied by the most acute suffering on the part of discarded one. For most trivial things, we discard our courtship and our marriage. And how is Sister White saying that we should deal with these difficulties that we are having in our lives? Adventist Home, 106, paragraph one. Together, though what? Let's. Determine to be. Continue the early what? Attentions in every way, encourage each other in fighting the battles of life. Study to advance what? The happiness of each other. Let there be mutual love, mutual forbearing. This is the only thing that is going to solve the marriage. Then marriage, instead of being the end of love, will be as it were the very beginning of what? The warmth of true friendship, the love that binds heart to heart is a foretaste of the joys of heaven. You don't want just to have a wife. You don't just want to have a husband. You want to have a friend. There are people who are only wives and husbands in the marriage. They are not friends. This is another serious problem. Do you know how you talk to your friend? Or you people, you don't have friends. Confidence. Do you know how you talk to them? Confidence and friends. You open all your secrets to your confidence and friends, is it? Is that what happens with your wife and husband? And you are still calling one, the two of you, one flesh, is it? That is mystery. And uh, continuing on, when poverty strikes, in such a case, as my advice will be mothers, whatever trials you may be called to endure through poverty, through wounds and bruises of the soul, from the harsh, overbearing assumption of the husband and father, do not do what? Do not give them up to the influence of a godless father. Your work is to counteract the work of the father who is apparently under the control of what? 
Satan. There is a time you have to understand that your wife is under the control of Satan and your husband is under the control of Satan. That is the time that you should never walk away for the sake of the children if you are having them. Because you don't want little devils in your house. You have Satan himself, and then you have fallen angels in terms of children. Sometimes we make a lot of decisions that doesn't match our Christianity. And so, instead of saying, I'm walking away, and you are leaving, whom are you leaving these little ones with? With their father to marry another woman. And then, what happens next? We are told we receive many letters soliciting for advice. Testimonies to sexual behaviors, page 44, paragraph one. One mother says her husband is what? An unbeliever. She has children, but they are taught by the father to disrespect, disrespect what? The mother. She is deeply burdened for her children. She does not know what course she can pursue. She then expresses her anxiety to do something in the course of God and inquires if I think she has a duty to leave what? Her family, if she's convinced she can do no good to them. I would answer what? My sister. I cannot see how you could be clear before the Lord and leave your husband and your children. I cannot think you will feel that you could do this yourself. The trials you may have may be of very trying character. You may be often pain to the heart because this respect is shown you. But I am sure that it must be your duty to care for your own children. This is your field where you have your appointed work. It may be rocky and discouraging soil to work, but you have a companion in all your efforts to do your duty unflinchingly, conscientiously, notwithstanding all the discouragement, discouraging circumstances. Jesus is your helper. Jesus came into our world to save lost and perishing souls, and you are to consider that in this work you are a laborer together with God. She continues to say, because Satan uses the father of your children to counteract your work, do not be discouraged. Do not give up the conflict. Do as you wish them to do. Treat your husband with kindness at all times. This can only happen if you have agape love. If the principles of marriage were built upon agape love, what you make the courtship be is what will make the marriage be when things are going hard. Treat your children to your heart with the records of love. This is your work. This is the burden you have to bear. Talk not to your home trials to anyone but Jesus. Pour them into his ear. A very bad father may have a godly son, a Christian father, a profligate son. Let mothers take up the burdens made doubly heavy for them by the cause of the head of the household. This makes your work plain to let your light shine in the household where Satan is at work to secure children to himself. Shall he have them? Let the missionary spirit rise to the emergency and say, no, no. My children, although they have a godless father, are the purchase of the blood of Christ. I am their mother. I'll seek the Lord in faith in humility that he will not only save my children, but also their father to repentance. Now, this is a higher calling. We are not getting into marriage to lower the standard and uh, uh, impress the world that marriage cannot work. Marriage will work. Talk not and plead not for the sympathy of your husband and your children, but simply live the life of what? Of Christ. In words, in spirit, in character, in meekness, in patience, and forbearance, in cheerfulness, be a signpost pointing out the way, the path that leads heavenward. Now, mothers, do not understand your work. Many people do not, do not understand their work. <laughs> Uh, 
cheerfulness better than complaining, 46.3 TSB. And you better go and read this booklet, Testimonies to Sexual Behavior. Have you felt your lot was hard and complained and murmured? Can I hear yes? yes? Yeah, that is the truth. And even those in courtship, are you not complaining and murmuring? Huh? No, your courtships are good, is it? We are having here people who are angels. Huh? You have met the love of your life. Huh? Okay. Then as you receive no help in this line, begin another what? Course of action. Speak what? Kindly be cheerful. Because you have Jesus as your helper, break forth in songs of praise. When tempted, when reviled, revile not again and labor with your children while there is one out of Christ. Sow the seed, the living seed, deep into the soil of the heart. Let your words be wisely chosen. Consider yourself as God's appointed missionary to be the light of your home. Again, I say it is not like the works of God to call the mother away from her husband and from her children to engage in what she considered Cedar's higher work. Take right hold of the duties lying directly in your path. And there are, there are women who have gone to missionary work because their marriage is not working. Now, don't think you are a missionary anymore. You left a mission field. What you are in is a mission field of another person, of an evangelist who is not you. You cannot leave a mission field. You cannot just escape from your bad husband. You are going to a mission. That is not what happens. And the missions are arranged from one month to another because you don't want to be in companionship of that person who is difficult to deal with in the house. It is better to stay in the house and try to sow seeds of truth in that house. Do not forsake your duty of post. Remember, Jesus know it all, every sorrow, every grief. He will not leave you to sing, for his arms are beneath you. By the way, when we talk about faith, and we have always talked about faith. Where is your faith? He says that if you had a little, like the mustard seed, is it? You will be able to do what? Tell this mountain be removed from this place and it will be removed. God forbid that your husbands can be so bad and God doesn't find it so good and he lays him to rest in such a state. Remember Nabal? Men, be careful how you treat your wives because if he goes on your knees, you have only two options, to be converted or to die. You read these stories in the Bible and you think they are jokes. A woman can go on her knees and because she have a positive influence in the society and many people will convert, be converted by her and you are disturbing her, God will lay you to rest like he lay Nabal to rest. Start thinking what you are doing. And by the way, those who are in courtship, you also may be this person who will never be converted and you start trifling with the hearts of girls, God will lay you to rest. Yeah. Those are serious matters. Because you will live with this girl, go live that and go live that and all that. That is what you are doing, plunging holes in the hearts of these young ladies. God cannot accept his children to suffer in the hands of such a man. He closes your probation. And if he closes your probation, what is the, why should you continue living? You will die. I'm telling you, read these stories with a different angle in the Bible. They don't just happen because they happen. Herod, when he is on the pulpit, giving an oration, and instead of praising the Lord, he praises his other gods, the Lord sends a, a worm and it eats him up, and then he dies. God cannot accept that his glory shall be trodden down by people who want to destroy the society. Your probation may close today, think about it. And this is not scaring you, I'm telling you real facts. Because we are being told that the family circle is the place where the character of the nation is shaped. 
And if you are not in the business of building the character of the nation and bringing people back to God, and you are professing godliness, God has nothing to do with you. God has nothing to do with hypocrites. He will give you enough chances. That is the God we serve. But at the end of the day, think again what you are doing. So let us be so careful with our courtship and our marriages because they are not that simple things. Because at the end of the day, Christ is going to marry the church, which is the bride. And those who have not come to a point of repentance and conversion shall be cast out. That is what actually, that is uh, what happens in the, in, in the issue of courtships and marriage. Because you reach at a time, you are a person who is a nuisance to the community. Many mothers are crying about you. Many fathers are crying about you. You are disturbing a lot of people. And there is no happiness in a community. There is no happiness in a country. You will not survive. And so, to this woman, we are told, may he help you to give your husband and children a testimony that you are a Christian in practice, that you love God, that you love Jesus who gave his life for you. During, and uh, we were talking the other time about when do the stars shine most? When the night is dark. When it is very dark, is it? Are you a star? What shows you are a star then? When darkness has defeated you. These little things you can't handle, and you are saying I'm a star. A star from which planet? That it is light cannot be seen. It is when there is a lot of darkness that we as stars should be shining according to Daniel chapter 12. In our marriages, when they are at their deepest darkness, in our courtship, when they are at their uh, 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 hardest part, that is when the stars are shining now. You thought about prophecy alone, is it? We have to think about these things. Do what? Refuse to speak a word of what? Unbelief. You have to show that you are a believer. Instead of bemoaning your weakness and talking unbelief and feeling that you are hardly used, begin to do what? To sing, Mary, make Mary in your heart. You may not sing aloud because other husbands will think that you are mocking them, but you can have a song in the heart. You know, you can sing before your husband and he just takes a, 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 a panga and chops your head. <laughs> do things wisely, do not mock your husband. It's not a must you sing loudly. Have a song in your heart. Rock of ages cleft for me in your heart. You will find peace enough to deal with the situation you are going through. When discouraging words are spoken to you, do not reply unless you can return a pleasant word. Answer TSB 50.4. Ladies, have we learned this? And by the way, I hate when I have to speak and my wife speaks. The only thing that can subdue me is when I speak and she remains quiet. I look like a fool and remain silent. But if you are talking and somebody is talking, you will talk the whole day. Learn when to talk. And if she starts talking in, in the house, either I have to remain silent or excuse myself I'm visiting somebody. I'll come back when she has stopped talking because whom should, shall she talk to? Empty house. Learn to deal with things. You don't have to sit there and be quarrel. But if you are a wife, you will have to stay there because immediately you leave, he'll ask you, where did you go? But she can't ask me, where did I go? And of course, I have told her I'm going to visit somebody. So, but in a ways way, not in a rude way. Learn how to do things to deal with the family issues. But you cannot learn to have wisdom. James chapter 1 verses 5 says that if you lack wisdom, do what? Ask the Lord who giveth without upbraiding. Hmm? or withholding from anyone. 
but because we don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, when we have problems, we don't know what to do. The law of kindness is ever on the lips of Christian woman. She utters no hasty words. To speak gently words when you feel irritated will bring sunshine into your heart and will make your path more smooth. A schoolgirl in answer to a question said, meek people are those who give soft answers to rough questions. I know some people are asking, Sam, do you have that habit? You know the question you ask me and they need rough answers. <laughs> yeah, don't tempt me with your question. But remember, we are talking about marriage. How do you deal with your marriage and coach? Hmm? Meek people are those who give what? Soft answers to what? To rough questions. This is how to deal with marriage and courtship. Yeah, she has quarreled you and he has quarreled you. What is your next question? Are we still going to the market to buy vegetable? What will she do? Hmm? She will relax. Are we still buying the land? Or have you changed your mind? Learn the questions to ask when things are not going your way. Learn how to cut off that prolonged hours of darkness. Bring light back into your marriage. You are a star and you have to shine during darkness. Try to change the conversation. And when things have settled down, now you can discuss. Why were you angry? Can I know where I went wrong? When things have settled, you can't sit somebody down when they are angry. You'll be doing futile job. You can't manage it. You say that your husband is not yet converted to the truth. Show him in your life the advantage of taking Christ at his word. By patience, forbearance, and kindness, you may win your husband to the same. Amen. How many minutes do I have? 4.44. I have 20 minutes. I'll finish this. TSB 51.2. I'm reading from this booklet, just section and jumping. Go and read it and read Solomon Appeal. They are the best books that I have ever read before I was married and after I was married. And the other best book I read when we were married is Child Guidance. We went through it, the whole of it. And so how foolish we were and how we were dealing with the things we were dealing with. Read these things with your partners and see if you are prepared to handle the marriage problems. There are things that should never even cross your mind as couples that bring a lot of problems in marriage. But because my people are perishing because they lack what? Knowledge. knowledge. Now, where shall you get knowledge? I cannot come to tell you everything you should do in your marriage. Take the books, read them, take your Bible and read it. It will open to you mysteries of marriage that you have never known. You will read the scriptures in a very different way if you start applying them to yourself. Life is not a romance, but a reality. In the power of God's grace, you may obtain most precious victories. You are not to treat your life as a romance, but what? As a reality. And so people just think that life is a romance. You are to be a laborer together with God. You must meet traits that are rough. It will not be blissful always, but you have to sojourn uh, uh, continue on as a soul. Do not dwell upon the hardships of the Christian life. And this is core issue. There's an, another aspect in marriage which women have to consider so much. At only a meal, somebody sold his birthright. Do you know that? At only food, this world is in sin. And because of food, according to Prophets and Kings, page 184, paragraph two, men are going to miss the sin. As a wife know how to prepare food. You don't want just to serve your husband anything. The husband wishes regarding food. The day we visited you, we appreciated much the bountiful repast prepared for us. But you need to study how to prepare nutritious food in the most simple way. Your husband's wishes regarding the preparation of food should be respected. Now, this is trivial, is it? This is a small matter, is it? 
It seems so small, but this husband will start eating outside and you will start having problems with him. Why is he coming home not hungry? Because you don't know how to cook. If it is vegetables, present them in a presentable way. And this kind of reformation that you are seeing in ministry that you bring skuma week is so dry on the table and you are saying you are reformed and you want your husband to take, go back with your reformation, not in my house. Or I cook for myself. I'm a cook. By the way, you got me eating before I married you. Now, these are strong statements. These little things that you think they are little, these are the things that you should be concerned. It is the, her guy says, who has despised the days of what? Little things. They are the ones that make mountains. And the statement that just I made some time before that uh, if your husband was so hungry and you gave the best meal on the table, what will make him continue being hungry? And so you may still study to prepare appetizing dishes in a simple and helpful a way as possible so that the fine nerves of the brain will not become weakened and paralyzed, making you excitable, nervous, and easily provoked. My dear sister, you stand in a responsible position in your home. Hold the reins of government with a wise, even hand. Do not allow the members of your family to lose their love and respect for you. God loves you. He loves your husband, and he is seeking to draw him to himself. He desires to take his attention off mere earthly enterprises and fix them on eternal riches. And so where do we end? Mothers do not half appreciate their possibilities and privileges. They do not seem to understand that they can be in the highest sense missionaries, laborers together with God in aiding their children to build a symmetrical character. And uh, do not let your happiness be marred by the difficulties that you are facing. And you understand the wise man says that uh, uh, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy, but not only that, uh, uh, a merry heart is what? A medicine, is it? Now, do you understand why people have ringos very early in their lives? Hmm? Their love have been so full of misery until their, dis, their skin have been uh, uh, robbed of uh, the pure flow of blood and the water being supplied well in the body. And then the blood is not pure and perfect health depends on perfect what? Circulation. And if you have a heart which is full of burdens, the blood does not flow in a proper way. So you are bent not to having a proper health. In the end, what you will have are just ringles. You are 25 and you look like you are 40. Because you have not cultivated not to allow somebody to mess with your happiness. We brace ourselves to resist the one who thinks he has injured us and thus we encourage Satan's temptation. Instead of praying to God for strength to resist Satan, we suffer our happiness to be marred by trying to stand for what we term what? Our rights. And by the way, women, do you have rights? Eh? You know you are trapped now. Is it? You left them where you came from. Where you are born is where your rights were left. You have come to be under somebody's shelter. Now you will call that lordship. But no, it's not lordship. You have come to make this household work out. And so what have you achieved in your marriage by fighting for your rights so far? Talk to me now. How many have achieved anything by fighting for their rights in their marriage? Yeah, that is 
when and by the way the time you are fighting for your rights do you know what you say if i were where i was born it could have not been like this so it means your rights were left where you came from but should now men use this opportunity to trample upon women? No, that is not what we are saying. But understand, fighting for your rights will never change anything. It will only rob you of your happiness. And you don't want for even a single uh, 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 moment to be robbed of your happiness. Duties of a husband, and I'm sorry, the power is gone, but those who are online can see this. Genesis 2.24. And this is incredible. Duty number one, they have to leave their father and mother for a while. You cannot be married and still your mind is where you are born. You have to sacrifice to leave your home, to stop comparing your home, to stop comparing your people with your husband, to stop all these things and work for your family. Uh, I'm talking about the duties of a husband. Genesis 2.24, to leave father and mother for a wife. Uh, Deuteronomy 13.6.8, husband should never allow his wife to turn him from God. These are the duties of a husband. Another duty of a husband, and uh, first year of marriage, life, husband should remain at home and cheer up his wife. Now, you don't go to a mission because you're married, is it? Huh? Ha, uh, the duty of a husband, number four, Proverbs 5.18, rejoice with his wife. If there is anyone that you should be happy in their presence and to make their life so joyous, it's your wife. Also found in Ecclesiastes 9.9. 9. And you find in Ephesians 5.25, love your wife as even Christ loved the church. And another thing which is so important for husband, Colossians 3.19, Colossians 3.19. Never be bitter with your family, more so your wife. You just don't know how you break her up when you are bitter with her. Always strive to solve things immediately and in an amicable way. Don't break up the spirit of your wife. She will never be able to perform the house duties if your work is to break her up. Proverbs 31, 28, commend and praise where due is. And 1 Peter 3, 7, be a man who can honor your wife. Brag about how your wife is beautiful, even if she's not. She is beautiful in heart, by the way. She may not have that face that you will have wanted her to have. But even, even her face is looking like that because you are the one who has caused it to be like that. You are not caring for her. So learn to honor. Do not deal treacherously with your wife. Malachi 2.14, do not deal deceitfully with your wife. And uh, 1 Corinthians 7.12, let the woman be converted by the way you live in a godly way the duties of a wife. Duties of a wife. Genesis 3, 6. The wife should never, like Eve, ask her husband to disobey God. Genesis 3, 6. Duties of a wife. Never ask your husband to disobey God.
The duty of a wife is to be a crown to her husband. Proverbs chapter 12, verses 4. A wife should always realize that the husband is the head of the wife. A wife should never try to usurp the authority of the husband. She should never take the prerogatives of the husband that she is the one who is deciding things that should happen at home. There should be counseling, but you should respect your husband as the priest. And the husband, you have to be the priest. Go and study the character of a priest. Then after becoming a priest, let the woman understand you are the priest of the home. The wife in Ephesians 5.33 is to reverence the husband. Go back and study about Rebecca and Isaac, how she was able to veil her face and when she saw Isaac. Colossians 3.18, wives, submit yourself unto your husband as it is fit in the Lord. But if your husband is not converted and he will want to lead you down paths, we have read the things that you should be doing. <laughs> Proverbs 19.13. Proverbs 19.13 and 21.9. A woman... Don't ever be contentious with your husband. Learn how to speak back pleasant words to your partner as a wife. Understand men sometimes don't need to be challenged. More so even you may be challenging your husband when he is so right in what he is telling you. So, don't be contentious. Don't be unhappy wife. Don't bring unhappiness at home. Be a woman that can be trusted by your husband. Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 26. Can your husband trust you? Have you cultivated that respect of being trusted? And as a woman, you have to live a godly life and to win the unbelieving husband. First Corinthians 7, 13, 16, and First Peter chapter 3. I'll read you a story as we close. My 10 minutes are over. I want us to concentrate here because we are now coming to an end. The mother is what? God's agent to do what? To Christianize her? She is to exemplify biblical religion showing how its influence is to control us in everyday duties and pleasures, teaching her children that by grace alone can they be saved through faith, which is the gift of God. As you faithful do your work, your duty in the home, that is a woman, the father as a priest of the household, the mother as a home missionary, you are multiplying agencies for doing good outside of the home. As you improve your own powers, you are becoming better fitted to labor in the church and in the neighborhood. If you cannot work together to better your family, you are not fitted to labor in the church of God. And that is why we are given the qualifications of an elder in the church. And so he, if he cannot rule his home well, if the wife can't cancel the children well in the house, they have no duty being deacons and deaconesses or elders in the church. For what kind of spirit will you pass on to the church members? Women are always complaining, but look at what uh, the prophet says in Adventist home page 235. If married men go into the work, leaving their wives to care for the children at home, the wife and mother is doing fully a great important a work as the husband and father. Although one is in the missionary field, the other is in a homeward missionary whose cares and anxieties and burdens frequently far exceed those of the husband and father. Women, do you believe that your duties are far exceeding than the work of an evangelist in the field? You know, we are suffering from uh, an identity crisis. 
We want to be what we are not supposed to be. We are trying to be some Eve that are wandering away from their position. We are told that a woman who cares for her family well is better than the husband who is in the field because she is shaping the future of the nation. But if she works for the best interest of her family, seeking to fashion their characters after the divine model, the recording angel writes her name as one of the greatest missionaries in the world. God does not see things as man's finite vision views them. I cannot say that I'm a better missionary than my wife because I'm here and she's at home. Do you know when I go back home, I'll want to eat without sending money? Where will she get food? From the kitchen garden. What if she just sat there? there there's no work that can match the work of a, a wife. And this should be things that should be understood from courtship entering into marriage. And then God does not call mothers away from there home mission and work which will leave their children under the control of influences that are demoralizing and ruinous to the soul. Are not her children in need of mission or labor? Are not her child children worth earnest and prayerful effort? Shall she neglect home mission and work for a larger field? Let her try her skill in her own home, take up her appointed God-given work. If she has utterly failed, it is because she has not had faith or may not have presented the truth and lived the truth as it is in Jesus. Let her, after years of apparent failure, try again other methods seeking counsel of God. And then, permit me, by the way of illustrating another feature of this question, to lead you into the sitting room of a respectable and pious, to lead you where? Into what? Thank God I have not visited some of you. I'll know if you are pious or not. The sitting room will tell me if you are a Christian or not. The way you treat your sitting room, I'll know, is the way you treat your husband. It is an index of who you are, according to the prophet. He, he says, she is neatly but plainly attired and with the aid of a servant dusting and cleaning the room, the doorbell rings and the girl hastens to see who is the visitor. She finds the lady's pastor at the door and without ceremony, ushers him into the sitting room. The lady's face is suffused with blushes as she confusedly lays aside her dusting brush and offers her hand to the minister saying, sir, I am ashamed you should find me thus. Going about homeward duties. What does the pastor reply? Mm -hmm. Let Christ, when he cometh, find me so doing, replaced her, replies her pastor. What, sir, do you wish to be found in this employment? Honestly inquired the astonished lady. Yes, madam, I wish to be found faithfully performing the duties of my mission as I have found you fulfilling yours. Hallelujah. Now, don't say amen so fast if you're not doing these things. <laughs> And was not the minister right. right? He recognized a great but a despised truth. He saw a high moral importance in the humble task of the lady as in the missions, as in the missions of who? Gabriel. Who is Gabriel? The, he's not just an angel. He stands in the presence of the Lord. It's like the wife in a sitting room, he's standing in the very presence of the Lord. Making the presence of the Lord come in the sitting room so that when the husband comes from the wife, uh, work and reaches in the house, he says, this is a blessed home. I was tired from the mission, but now I'm at home at last, I'm in heaven. Is this the atmosphere that the husband finds when he come back home? And you think this man can love you more? He comes and they, hey, there's some utensils. I don't know what's going on with the utensils in the floor. The child is looking like a duster and all these stuff. <laughs> the lady in her home should exhibit an affection as true and obedient as sincere. 
as an angel in his fear. The work of a woman is compared to the work of Angel Gabriel. If you never found, if you have never read this, you should read again. It will be difficult to show where in her employment was morally and necessarily inferior. To this, in, in so much, the character of an act derives all its moral greatness, not from the sphere of the actor, but from its conformity to the will of God. Do you perceive the bearing of my illustration upon the question of woman's fear? It shows that your sex is not necessarily inferior to the other because it is called by God and nature to act in a different sphere. Your exclusion from the stage of public life does not imply your inferiority as a woman. Only the diversity of your powers, functions, and duties are diverse, but you are a match to that man who is in the field. And so, the Lord is calling us back to reforms. So what if your husband has committed adultery? What should you do? The prophet cancels this. In regard to the case of injured sister A.G., this is a husband had committed adultery. We will say in reply in the question of JHW that it is a feature in the cases of most who have been overtaken in sin. As her husband has, that they have no real sense of their villain. Some, however, do and are restored to the church, but not till they have merited the confidence of the people of God by unqualified confession and a period of sincere repentance. This case presents difficulties not found in some, and we will add only the following. What does she add? In cases of the violation of the seventh commandment, where the guilty party does not manifest true repentance, if the injured party can obtain a divorce without making their own case, that of their children, if they have them, once by so doing, they should be free. Now understand what the prophet is saying. If your husband is overtaken in adultery, and this even applies to the wives, they are overtaken in adultery. If you know that separation will cause a lot of problem to your children, don't seek divorce. I'll read the quote again and you listen. Review and Herald, March 24, 1868, paragraph two, I repeat, RH, March 24, 1868, paragraph two, I'll go slowly. In cases of the violation of the seventh commandment, come, where the guilty party does not manifest true repentance. If the injured party can obtain a divorce without making their own cases and that of their children, if they have them worse by so doing, they should be free. But if their case will be worse and the case of their children worse, then the opposite is true. They should never seek for a divorce. Now we have come to the matters of adultery, how you deal with them. For the sake of these little ones who have to grow up with single parents, do not divorce. Divorce is not the solution, by the way. If divorce was a solution, you know what could have happened. When Israel went warring against God, what would God have done? Moses tells God, and the people of the world will do what? Hear of what you have? done and they'll see and they'll say he was not able to take these people these children to the promised land and what did god do he repented of what he wanted to do are you not ashamed of what will be talked about your husband or wife when you start telling people that i got her in adultery i got him an adultery and what i'm seeking is divorce the situation has not even been made as worse as you would like it Maybe you have been the contributing factor to that adulterer. And by the way, how many times do you commit adultery? Do you know that? Hmm. You think that finding somebody sleeping with somebody is what is called adultery. Is that what Christ says in Matthew chapter five? No, no, no. How many times have you lasted after people's wives in the church? Hmm. Just because somebody can't read the heart, you start applying for divorce?
you have caught him an adultery. You have committed adultery more than 70 times in the church. Mm -hmm. Who has divorced you? We should be practical in what we are doing and logical. Now, how many times have you broken the laws of God? Do you know that is adultery? What is adultery? Taking your allegiance to another person, is it? There are some things God have instructed us to do, is it? Is it true? Yes. When we do things that are contrary to God, what are we committing? Adultery. Spiritual adultery. Has God divorced you? He asked in Isaiah 50, where is your divorce papers? Can you show them? So why are you brandishing divorce papers before your spouse when God has not brandished them in your face when you have gone against him? I tell you, be careful how you deal with your courtship and marriages. It is not an easy thing. If they will be liable to place themselves to place themselves and their children in worse condition by a divorce, we know of no scripture that will make the innocent party guilty by remaining. Now listen to that. You have found your spouse in adultery. The prophet says, if they would be liable to place themselves and their children in a worse condition by divorce, by divorcing, you are making your life a miserable one in the life of the children. She says, we know of no scripture that would make the innocent party guilty of remaining in the marriage. You tell your husband, okay, I have caught you, your wife, I have caught you. But is this going to solve anything? I'll sit here and remain in my marriage and work out. And unless he throws you out, there's no sin in that. And so let us not be harsh in rushing for divorce. So what should you do if you have been wrong in adulterous case as a spouse, as a partner in marriage? She says this, Time and labor and prayer and patience and faith and godly life might work a reform in this spouse. <clears throat> to live with one who has broken the marriage vows and is covered all over with the disgrace and shame of guilty love realizes it not is an eating canker to the soul and yet a divorce is a lifelong heartfelt soul. So she says that if you remain in this marriage, there is a way you can subdue the heart of this person. But if you break away in divorce, it only worsens things. God pity the innocent, but marriage should be considered well before contracted. And so why will not those who are overtaken in crime manifest repentance proportionate to the enormity of their crime and fly to Christ for mercy and heal as for far as possible the wounds of they have made. But uh, if they will not do as they should, and if the innocent have forfeited the legal right to a divorce by living with the guilty after his guilt is known, we'd not see that sin rests upon the innocent in remaining. If her health and life be not greatly endangered in so remaining. So uh, if your life is not endangered by remaining in marriage, the prophet counsels remain in the marriage you may work out the salvation of this soul. Mm -hmm. If he's not threatening to kill you, if he's not threatening not to provide for you, he has just committed adultery and he is repentant about it. Don't rush to divorce. Forgive and work out for him or for her. And so, I don't, I, I, I'll read this. The greatest reminder in those marriages that are not working. This is the last point. I saw that those who profess the truth should hold the standard high and induce others to come to it. I saw that some will have to walk the straight path alone. Their companions and children will not walk the self-denying pathway with, with them. Patience, Forbearance should ever characterize the lives of those lone pilgrims following the example of their blessed master. They will have many trials to endure, but they have a hope that makes the soul 
strong, that bears them up above the trials of earth, that elevates them above scorn, derision and reproach. Those who pro possess a hope like this should never indulge in a harsh and kind spirit. Those who are converted should never exercise unkind spirit in the marriage. Why? If your companions and the children will not come, if you cannot win them to yield to the claims of truth, make their lives here as pleasant as possible. How many wives here are making their marriages as pleasant as possible to their bad husbands? How many husbands are making the lives of their wives more pleasant because they are bad? You know you are the, not the man or you are not the woman, is it? We were looking at where is the man and where is the woman? Are you the woman? Are you the man? I pray that when we finish this, you will be that woman. He says, you have a hope. You that is a believer and your husband or your wife is not a believer is disturbing you. He says, you have a hope that will yield you consolation amid the disappointments and trials of life. Your companions and children who will not be induced to tread the narrow cross-bearing pathway with you have not this divine consolation. And what? They should have your pity for this world is all the heaven they will ever have. Amen? Maybe the man just having you as a wife, having a sympathetic wife, is all the heaven he will ever have. Maybe the wife just having a sympathetic husband is all the heaven that he will ever have. Do your best to be that heaven, amen? amen. Don't be a hell to your partner. He's already going to hell, you know that, is it? Huh? You want to be her hell or his hell? There's hell waiting for him, okay? So be the heaven first. This is the all heaven you'll ever have. You are the wife, you are the heaven he has, the wife of the husband. Give him what he needs. You have this hope that you will see Christ in the clouds of the air. May the Lord be with us and may the Lord bless us. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Loving Father in heaven, it is evident that uh, we have not dealt with the issues in marriage as we should deal with them, as even Christ deals with the issues in the church. As uh, men of marriage and women of marriage, those in courtship, we have failed a great deal. But we come unto thee that, that is able to convict and convert souls. We need your strength more than ever before. We want to be sure that really we are doing the will of God. Help us not to be so swift to see the negative sides, but the positive sides of everything that we go through in life. And I know that, uh, Lord, you will hear our prayers because your ears are not deaf. For in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.